Hey guys, how are you? Welcome back to One Stop Biology. So we have in the previous uh, video covered sexual reproduction, and in that we have covered pre-fertilization phase. So as we were discussing in the previous video that there are three events or phases involved as part of reproduction. So the first one is pre-fertilization, right? The second one is fertilization. And the third one is post-fertilization. Right. So we covered that in pre-fertilization, how are the gametes formed? What is gametogenesis? Right. How are they transferred? Now, once the gametes are transferred, we come across the second event, which is fertilization. Now, guys, remember that the fertilization is known as the most vital event of sexual reproduction. Right. This is the most vital event of sexual reproduction. Now, what happens is fusion of gametes. So what happens is fertilization is fusion of gametes. So, the male gamete, which is the motile one, basically reaches to the non-motile gamete, which is the female one, right? And this process of fusion of gamete is basically known as syngamy. Okay, this is known as syngamy. And what is it forms? It forms a diploid zygote through fertilization. So basically what we saw was that there is a male and there is a female gamete. Both are haploid and these two together fuse and form zygote. Right? So this is zygote and this is diploid in number. It has two cells right now in some organisms remember that in some organisms female gamete undergo development to form new organi organisms without fertilization so in in some cases what happens is that there is no fertilization and the female gamete itself just undergoes development and it forms the new organisms so this process wherein the reproduction occurs without fertilization is known as parthenogenesis this process is known as parthenogenesis okay so now let's see where does this syngamy occurs right so where there is a fusion of gamete where does it exactly occur right so in most aquatic organisms guys in most or aquatic organisms say in algae or maybe in fishes as well or amphibians right so the syngamy occurs even in water right in an external medium which is water now if the fertilization is outside the body of the organism and as it is happening in case of aquatic organisms many aquatic organisms the fertilization is known as external fertilization what it is known as external fertilization okay so now these organisms which exhibit external fertilization this show great synchrony so they are very much synchronized with each other and they release a large number of gametes because there is a possibility that the gametes will not fuse, right? So they release a large number of gametes and they work very, very synchronously. Okay. So basically what happens is the gametes are formed outside the body, right? So then the offspring formed will also be outside the body. And that is the reason that offsprings in case of external fertilization are extremely vulnerable to predators because there might be different other animals present in the at the time of fertilization and when it develops into an offspring which might eat these offsprings as their food so they are extremely vulnerable to predators okay now what happens in case of terrestrial organisms right with the organisms which live on earth basically right so 
what happens there like may, maybe fungi or even higher animals like reptiles birds mammals including humans and even many plants like bryophytes pteridophytes gymnosperms and angiosperms right so here syngamy occurs inside the body of the organism so inside the female body the syngamy or fertilization occurs right and that is why fertilization is known as internal fertilization so guys if you remember in class 11th when we were dealing with the animal and plant kingdom we very often used internal and external fertilization right so you can go back and revise those chapters now and see where do we have internal and where do we have external fertilization right so in case of internal for fertilization the male gamete is motile and has to reach egg right in order to fuse with it now in case of seed plants the male gamete is non motile like pollen grains are non motile and that is why they are carried by pollen tubes so the male gametes are carried to female gamete by pollen tubes okay so there are you can see that there are several uh, you know uh, specifically formed features for specific organisms to facilitate fertilization right so this is how fertilization occurs in some cases it is external which is outside the body and in some cases it is internal which means inside the bodies and there are pros and cons or there are various characteristic features of both the kinds of fertilization right so once the egg and the male gamete which is anthrazoid fuse it forms a zygote right so what happens after the zygote is formed is basically the third event of reproduction which is post fertilization event so what happens after the formation of zygote right so formation of diploid zygote as you can see here that the zygote is diploid right so further development starts okay so basically what happens is that formation of diploid zygote is universal to all sexually reproducing organisms so for all the organisms which are basically reproducing sexually they form diploid zygote okay now in organisms with external fertilization this zygote is formed in external medium which may be normally water and in case of internal fertilization the zygote is formed inside the body of the organism right so further development of zygote that depends on life cycle of the organism the kind of life cycle that the organism has and the kind of environment that organism is exposed to right but this is very important because it ensures ensures continuity of species right so every sexually reproducing organism begin life as a single cell which is the zygote right so in different chapters we will study the entire formation say from zygote to an offspring as well in different chapters in the case of plants and animals both right now the first one is how the zygote is formed now embryogenesis occurs right so embryogenesis is basically the next level okay wherein the zygote develops into an embryo okay so in during embryogenesis basically what happens is zygote undergoes cell division and cell differentiation right so it undergoes mitosis and then it those cells differentiates so basically mitosis is nothing but increasing the number of cells in the developing embryo and once they reach to a particular number to an optimal number these cells then form groups or 
दे अंडर गो मॉडिफिकेशन टू फॉर्म स्पेशलाइज टिश्यूज एंड ऑर्गन एंड दे बिकम एन एम्ब्रायो ओके दे बिकम एन एम्ब्रायो ओके सो नाउ वॉट हैपन्स आफ्टर एम्ब्रायोजेनेसिस इज डेवलपमेंट ऑफ एम्ब्रायो इधर इन साइड और आउटसाइड दी बॉडी एंड देन दट डेवलप इन टू एन ऑफ स्प्रिंग ओके नाउ इन केस ऑफ एनिमल्स बेसिकली दे आर कैटेगराइज एज ओवी पैरस विच मीन्स लेइंग एग और वीवी पैरस विच मीन्स रिप्रोडक्शन ऑफ एन ऑफ स्प्रिंग डिरेक्टली ओके so this depends whether the development of zygote takes place outside or inside the parent okay so what happens in oviparous in that case fertilized eggs okay fertilized egg that is covered by hard calcareous shell and these eggs are laid in a safe place and then after a period of incubation incubation basically the young ones hatch out from the egg okay this is the case wherein the animals are oviparous now in the case of viviparous the zygote develops inside the body of female right and it develops into the young ones and then these young ones are delivered Out after attaining a certain stage of growth. Okay, so depending from organism to organism, different depending on different animals and their life cycle, after attaining a certain stage of growth, these young ones are delivered out basically. Okay, so this is the case of in viviparous, right? Now because of proper embryonic care and protection in case of viviparous the chances of survival of young ones is more in case of viviparous than oviparous okay and then in the case of plants what happens in case of say flowering plants the zygote is formed inside the ovule and after fertilization what happens is the various different parts of the flower like sepals petals and semen that fall off right and this zygote which is formed inside the ovule it develops into embryo and the ovule develop into the seed okay so what happens is the zygote develops into the embryo the ovules develop into the seed and the ovary develops into the fruit okay and then this fruit again can reproduce another offspring through the seed right the seed germinates under favorable condition to produce new plant right so these are two different cases in case of plants and animals to have complete sexual reproduction and produce a proper offspring right and why do we produce it to have that continuity of your own species inside the food chain making the presence of your species on earth basically right so with this we finish we finish the other two events which is fertilization and post fertilization in case of plants and animals both and yes guys definitely we are going to take it up uh, separately in case of plants and animals in the later chapters okay so i hope you understood the uh, three events of fertilization pre fertilization fertilization and post fertilization in detail and uh, completely uh, if not i would request you to drop me a message on the whatsapp number given in the description or even on the com comment section and i'll clear your doubts and if you understood the this chapter very well because we have finished the first chapter of class 12th please do like the video and share it with your friends thank you so much guys bye bye